coming back to the larger issue again, uh, what steps do you think therefore need to be taken to ensure that uh, fishermen on, on, on the coast of both these countries do not feel disaffected? Okay, I think uh, people like me are uh, looking at a, a kind of a, a scenario where while you know the border is there, okay. we respect it. Mm -hmm. We also respect fishermen uh, livelihoods. Right. But this can be, so in other words, uh, whether it is uh, a legal right or not, mm -hmm. there is, the, it is probably inevitable that fishing fishermen on both sides right. will have a certain amount of fishing activities on the other side. Right. This is something probably unavoidable. Right. If you look at the fishermen perspective from the Sri Lankan side, right. by and large, mm -hmm. by and large, they have taken the position that, mm -hmm. you know, our objection is not to Indian fishermen fishing in Sri Lankan waters per se. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Actually, they are not saying that we are objecting to Indian fishermen coming to our waters. Mm -hmm. What they are saying is Indian fishermen coming and fishing mm -hmm. in a manner that affects our fishing. Okay. And there they are specifically talking about the trawling, trawling. which right. our fishermen, right. which they have in their waters by and large tried to avoid. Okay. In fact, uh, uh, only very recently, uh, this was a reality for a, uh, for a very long time, but right. only recently the Sri Lankan government has formally banned uh, trawling by okay. Sri Lankan fishermen. Okay. Okay. So, so they, the main objection from the Sri Lankan side okay. is the Indian uh, fishing method. Okay. okay. Even with the traditional fishing method, there is one particular objection they have. Our fishermen use uh, uh, monofilament nets nowadays mm -hmm. increasingly. Mm -hmm. uh, nylon monofilament nets. Okay. Traditionally or earlier, okay. uh, we used to use nylon multifilament. Okay. So this is also something that they are objecting. Okay. Okay. So the uh, uh, something that we can do on our side mm -hmm. to resolve this problem mm -hmm. is definitely to uh, uh, you know uh, manage the capacity or reduce the capacity of the trawl sector on the Indian side of the party. Right. right. If we have so many trawlers, mm -hmm. for their pure sheer survival, they have to go and fish in Sri Lanka. Mm -hmm. So we have to uh, move to more small scale and uh, eco-friendly fishing methods. Are these steps uh, being uh, taken at all recently or uh, or this is only on paper? So nothing else. Nothing has been done so far because in India, this trawler problem mm -hmm. is a, it's an all India problem. It okay. is not a, okay. it is there everywhere. Okay. We have no control over trawlers. We have allowed over capacity to come. Mm -hmm. If you go by the scientific institution studies, mm -hmm. Central Marine Fish Research Institute, CMFRI, mm -hmm. almost everywhere they are talking of, you know, trawlers being probably equal to double the uh, numbers that we could probably right. live with. Right, right. Uh, this overcapacity in the trawl sector mm -hmm. is a, a nationwide phenomenon and nowhere has the government seriously started taking any steps to bring down the capacity. From within the fishermen themselves, has there been any initiatives for uh, some kind of uh, understanding uh, between both the communities uh, and uh, so that uh, trawling can be lessened uh, uh, in the Indian side uh, or something of the sort? Has, has there been uh, in initiatives uh, between the, uh, the fishermen communities? Yes. There, there have been initiatives. Mm -hmm. uh, I was, in fact, I am part of uh, the initiative okay. that has been there, uh, which started in 2000, uh, 2004, in fact. Right, right. 2004. Mm -hmm. We had the uh, first initiative mm -hmm. when uh, I led a delegation of uh, 21 from Tamil Nadu. Okay. We spent uh, uh, a few days in Sri Lanka visiting. Uh, some of the war affected areas in Manar. Okay. And then a delegation of fishermen from different parts of the northern province came to Colombo. Okay. And we had a day meeting in Colombo in 2004, May 2004. Right. That's when we got very clearly okay. what the uh, views of the uh, fishermen of the northern province of Sri Lanka were. And that was, they are saying, we are brothers, the border is not a very big deal. Okay. But please don't do trawling. Okay. It is not good for you, it is not good for us, it is not good for our children. Right. Yeah? So this was the clear position they took. Okay. So after that, 
there has been discussions in Tamil Nadu among the fishermen, especially the affected area, about what to do about the problem. So there has been, you know, I won't say a wholehearted everybody coming on board, but there is a significant now uh, opinion among the trawl, uh, trawl boat owner associations themselves saying that we have no option but to now reduce trawling. Uh, and, but to reduce trawling, it is something that uh, we cannot do uh, on our own. Okay. In the sense that it is just like saying, you know, uh, I will give up my livelihood. Right. Or I will drastically curtail my livelihood. Right. It requires a concerted effort by the government, right. a package, development package by the government, which will reduce the trawlers and provide alternatives mm -hmm. to those who are. Uh, giving up trawling. Right. Uh, and we did a study in 2007. Okay. About 25% of the uh, trawl owners were actually ready, ready to uh, uh, return their trawlers if some kind of a compensation or alternative would be provided. Right. 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 So definitely there is a possibility that we need, we can work on, but it is not something that the burden of this cannot be put on the fishermen. Okay. They cannot unilaterally solve this issue. Okay. There has to be a major uh, package which will help the trawlers, uh, a trawl fleet, a part of the trawl fleet be retired and those who are working on them and those who own them uh, get some kind of alternative. And apart from this, uh, there has also got to be a lot, lot more initiative in uh, actuating agreements signed between these two countries for non-lethal uh, ways of, uh, uh, you know, treating uh, fishermen who are across the borders, right? Uh, in the sense that the, uh, there is a lot of resentment in the way the Sri Lankan Navy has acted against Indian fishermen. Of course, the deaths, uh, for example, are exemplify this, right? The uh, shooting of Indian fishermen, the physical harassment, this is uh, at one level a slightly different issue. Mm -hmm. uh, but there is a link with the, you know, transborder fishing. They, obviously, it happens because of transborder fishing. Right. Now, uh, first, you need one needs to put this in perspective. Uh, without, uh, in any way, condoning or justifying any of these uh, terrible acts, right. uh, so of which we believe, are, you know, almost all of which we believe have been done by uh, Sri Lankan naval personnel. Right. Uh, literally, on every alternate day in the Park Bay, mm -hmm. uh, thousands of boats, at least around thousand boats, cross over right. and fish. So it's quite a large number. Right. that is involved right. and therefore the incidents that are involved uh, are in the, you know are occasional okay. they, they are very deplorable right. they are not acceptable but the impression that uh, uh, any when our fisherman goes across right. he is uh, automatically caught and harassed is not correct okay. some elements in the navy okay. probably uh, you know due to immaturity or some other reason are certainly involved in this uh, you know, uh, in this activity, uh, which causes this uh, very serious problem. So definitely, it is a problem. But on the other hand, we also have the problem that our fishermen, if you really take this position that uh, you know, uh, treat us, take you know, hand, deal us lawfully. Right. This is what is being talked about. We have a problem. If they treat us lawfully, we just can't go and fish there. Right. 